We want the ability to access the user information from Firebase in whatever component we create, because who knows when that email information will come in handy. To add this functionality, we can take advantage of the Redux library and add a user reducer. Recall that with adding Redux logic to an application, we think about it in three steps. Let's add a constant, an action creator, and add the reducer. So first, let's add a constants file right next to index.js and firebase.js. So constants.js. We'll export one constant for now called signed in. Now, we still have to set up Redux itself within our index.js file. We'll need a provider component. So let's import provider from React Redux. Also, we'll need to import that create store function from Redux itself. Let's make sure I spelled it correctly as well. Let's go ahead and wrap everything with that provider component. I'm going to wrap this, take it, and place it within here. There we go. As I save, we're going to start seeing some errors within our application. So the prop store is marked as required in provider. So once again, we need to call create store and give our provider a property of store. So we'll say it's store is equal to store. But now our store is expecting a reducer. So let's create a new folder within source called reducers. And then within reducers, let's declare a index.js file. Now, before we create this reducer, let's first define an action creator that a reducer can handle. So also within source, let's declare a actions folder. And these actions will have a index.js file. And then we'll need to import that signed in constant from our constants. So make sure you go up one directory with a dot dot slash. And our first action will be a function called log user. It'll have one email in the parameter for now. And this action creator creates an action. So we'll have a plain JavaScript object whose type will be signed in. And remember, each action within Redux needs that type property. And for now, we'll simply return an email key with the email that we pass in our log user. So that should be enough for our actions. Now we can actually head to reducers and define that reducer to handle this action creator. So we'll also need to import signed in from constants. Constants. And let's declare a user variable with let, because we're going to modify it later, with a null email for now. And then we'll export by default an anonymous arrow function with two parameters. The first one being our state, which will be the user right here. It'll be automatically initialized. And then our action. And remember the pattern with reducers, we switch on that action.type. We'll handle the first case of signed in. Let's go ahead and grab the email from our action. Then we'll say our user is now equal to the new email that we find within here. And we'll use ES6 shorthand syntax. And then we'll go ahead and return this new user. And remember with switch statements, we always want a default case. And our default case will be to return the state, which is initialized to this user right here. Great. Now that we have a defined reducer, we can import it with an index. So let's import our reducer from our reducers component. And then argue reducer within create store, which should get rid of that 
error. Cool. Now there's another thing. When we push our application when the user is valid to the app page with browser history, we also want to log the user with the action creator we just defined. So let's import log user from our actions. And then to call this function, we don't have a whole component as usual to map this batch of props and bind our action creator. Therefore, we can't call this.props.logUser because, well, we don't have a class. However, we do have the original store object accessible within this file. So we can actually even do one better than call this.props and instead use store.dispatch log user and send our action from the very bottom of our application. So remember we need to pass our email variable, then we can find this email variable within our user object that Firebase gives us. Let's save. Then seems like in our actions, we actually have to return the action. You guys probably caught that. So once more, let's go back to index.js. Let's try signing in. So Harry at Potter.com. We made him earlier. Let's sign in. And it seems like everything works. So now what we actually need to do is quickly hook up map state to props to this component and connect it to our Redux to see if we actually have a user within our Redux application. So let's import connect from React Redux. Let's quickly define a map state to props function. Map state to props, pass the state argument. Let's console.log this state for now to see if we actually find a user there. Let's return an empty object. That way it doesn't throw an error at us. Let's connect it up. We'll have our map state to props. And we're not mapping any action creators, so we can just have null for our second argument. Let's hook the whole thing up. Let's save. And as we do, we notice we have something within state, and it's our object with our email within it. Spectacular. We just spent a lot of time hooking Redux to our application, and it works. So let's move on to the next video, where we start structuring our actual app page.